Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Sus. Uh, having a great Wednesday night right now. There's still action going on. I'm recording this. The uh, The late games aren't over yet, but I think I'm like 8-0 as far as my picks on the live show and 4-0 on the upload. So I'm off to a hell of a start here for Wednesday night. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, I will have swept the board or something crazy. Things keep going my way. We'll see. Uh, but in this video, we're talking college basketball Thursday. I'm going through four games. Let's do it. Welcome to The Sus. The sauce. Sauce. Hey, get the sauce. First up, we got SMU on the road at Florida Atlantic. FAU laying five and a half points at home. The total sitting at 154. Betting trends on the SMU side look pretty good here. 3-0 against the spread as road dogs this season. 7-2 against the spread on the road this year as a whole. 7-5-1 against the spread in conference play. On the other side, uh, FAU is 5-6 against the spread at home this year. Just 4-10 against the spread with two or three days off. They have not been great uh, in the, with the short rest. 3-10 against the spread in conference play. Let's take a look at the recent schedules for these two teams. Uh, both are actually 8-2 in their last 10 SMU 2-2 two two in their last four on the road. FAU a perfect 5-0 in their last five at home. Strength of schedule pretty much the same, 134-146. We'll start with the matchup for SMU's offense and huge edge for the Mustangs on this side of the court. I mean, efficient field goal percentage, 50th to 172nd. Look at the rebounding edge, 4th to 207th. Even the turnover edge goes to SMU. Uh, huge, huge mismatch here for SMU's offense. When we take a look at the shot charts, I mean, SMU should be able to score on FAU's defense in multiple locations, but specifically the mid-range shot. Check this out. SMU offensively in their last 10 games, 91st in frequency, 16th in efficiency, shooting the long mid-range shot. Look at FAU's defense, 294 and 349th in efficiency. And keep in mind, we're talking about an SMU offense that actually shoots better on the road, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, a rarity in this year for college basketball. 157th in efficient field goal percentage at home. Number jumps up to 26th on the road. Their defense has also been better on the road. But now we flip it over to the other side of the court, and this is where the advantage swings back over to FAU. Because uh, everything I just said about the matchup for SMU offensively, copy and paste it and say the same thing for uh, FAU's offense. They have the advantage in every single category here field goal percentage rebounding turnovers everything shot charts on this side of the ball i mean i guess we could point at the three-point shooting but it's really just because smu's been so bad at defending the three 201st above the break 299th in the corner fau isn't a great three-point shooting team but they do shoot a decent amount of them uh fau should definitely get looks from outside in this game but in my opinion that's not enough to warrant five and a half points i mean this number is way too big in my opinion if this was one one and a half two i might be able to look at fau but an smu team that's played well on the road i'm gonna go with the mustangs here give me smu plus five and a half next game big 10 up next we got ohio state on the road at minnesota gophers laying three and a half points at home the total set at 139 and a half Betting trends on the Ohio State side look pretty ugly. <laughs> Two and five against the spread on the road this year. Five and 10 against the spread in conference play. Five and nine against the spread coming off a win. On the opposite side, Minnesota's trends look great. 11 and one against the spread as home favorites. 12 and two against the spread in Big Ten play so far. 22 and three against the spread this season. One of the best, is it, I think, is it the best in college basketball, Andy? I think it's the best in college basketball. Yeah, it's certainly one of the best in college basketball. Recent schedules for these two teams, uh, Ohio State just 3-7 and seven in their last 10, 0-5 oh in their last five on the road, five straight road losses. Actually, it's a lot more than five. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Minnesota 4-6 and six in their last 10, 3-2 and two in their last five at home. Strength of schedule, slight edge towards Minnesota, 40th to 54th. And before we go any further, we need to mention the drought. The Ohio State Buckeyes have not won a road game since January 1st, 2023 coming up on 14 months since Ohio State has won a road game. Just wow. So we'll start with the matchup for the Buckeyes offense here. Uh, and edge definitely goes to the Minnesota defense on this side, but I am worried about the turnovers. Minnesota probably not going to be able to create many turnovers in this game. Ohio State, the huge edge in that department. But other than that, I mean, efficient field goal percentage, solid edge, rebounding, neither unit very good. Not much to go by as far as the shot charts on this side. 
I mean, we can pull up the mid-range shooting numbers. Ohio State takes a decent amount of mid-range shots, and they're actually okay at it. Uh, but Minnesota defensively against the mid-range shot is also kind of okay. I mean, 143rd, 188th, so pretty average. Now we flip it over to the other side and take a look at the matchup for Minnesota's offense. Uh, edge goes to the Gophers on this side. Ohio State's defense is <laughs> it's struggling, to, to put it delicately. Efficient field goal percentage, 130th to 263rd. Minnesota with a slight rebounding edge and the slight turnover edge. I mean, Minnesota's offense hasn't even been that good, but anyone would have the advantage over Ohio State's defense. Now, check this out. Let's pull up the shot charts here. Uh, and there's actually a couple shot zones where Ohio State might be able to give Minnesota some problems, specifically at the rim. Uh, Minnesota, a pretty efficient scoring team down there, but Ohio State's defense is 139th in efficiency, so they haven't been terrible protecting the basket. They've also done a good job against the mid-range shot, another zone where Minnesota tends to shoot from, 105th in frequency. So off the bat, I was thinking, hey, maybe this Ohio State defense could give Minnesota some problems, but then we look at the above the break three numbers, and Minnesota shoots a lot of them, 45th in frequency from above the break in the last 10, 92nd in efficiency. This is a very good three-point shooting team. Look at Ohio State's defense. 350th in efficiency against the above the break three in the last 10. Minnesota should be able to splash on them. And to make things even worse, let's bring up Ohio State's home away splits. You can see the offense actually isn't that much worse on the road, but look at the defense. Efficient field goal percentage on the defensive side, 46.9% at home, 52.2% on the road. So almost a full 6% higher. I'm a little sketched out by this. I don't 100% understand the line. Uh, at a short number like three and a half, you got to know the entire world is going to be betting Minnesota here. I haven't bet this yet. I, I probably will end up betting it, but I'd like to see it move to four, four and a half before I, I pull the trigger. I, let's say Minnesota minus three and a half for now. Next game. Let's head out west to the Pac-12. We got Oregon on the road at Stanford. Uh, this one's currently at a pick. I see a Stanford plus one and a half. I also see a, a Stanford minus one. So uh, I think everything's circling around a pick them here. Total sitting at 150 and a half. Betting trends on the Oregon side. Uh, Ducks are 6-10 and 10 against the spread coming off a win. 4-4 four and four against the spread on the road this year. 9-10 and 10 against the spread as road underdogs. On the other side, Stanford is 8-5 and five against the spread at home this year. 6-5 and five against the spread as home favorites. 7-7-1 seven, seven and one against the spread in Pac-12 play. If we look at the recent schedules for these two teams uh, in the last 10 games, Oregon's 5-5, five and five, Stanford is 4-6. and six. Strength of schedule, pretty much the same, 95th to 104th. Uh, Stanford three and two in their last five at home. Oregon two and three in their last five on the road. We'll start with the matchup for Oregon offensively. I mean, kind of a wash on this side of the court. I mean, I guess I give the slight edge to Oregon, but Stanford has the big rebounding advantage here. Uh, fish and field goal percentage 237 to 283rd in the last 10. But look at the rebounding 174th to 48th. Uh, Oregon also has the huge turnover advantage as well. So Stanford probably not going to be able to create many turnovers here. As far as the shot charts go for Oregon offensively, I mean, they're shooting the mid-range shot pretty well, 120th in efficiency, and Stanford does struggle defensively against the mid-range shot, so there's something. I mean, we could also look at the above the break three. Oregon takes a decent amount of outside shots, uh, and Stanford has struggled on the perimeter. They've struggled to defend the three ball. Problem is, Oregon hasn't really been hitting them. They're just 276th in efficiency, so I really don't know if we can count on the outside shot being there for Oregon, especially on the road. On the other side of the court, we got Stanford's offense, and I will give Stanford the edge here as far as the surface level numbers. That being said, I'm definitely worried about these rebounding and turnover numbers. Uh, vision field goal percentage, huge edge, 62nd to 212th, but Oregon, big rebounding edge, not going to be many second chance points for Stanford. And look at the turnovers. Stanford is 310th in the last 10 games, having real problems protecting the ball. Shot charts on this side. Side, there are a couple of zones here that should be nice spots for Stanford. The short mid-range shot, that 8-12 to 12 footer. Stanford 102nd in frequency, 77th in efficiency. Oregon 348th defensively there, so Stanford should be able to score from that zone. Also above the break threes, 54th and 20th. Stanford's been great out there. Oregon defensively 163rd. Another problem for the Ducks here is how bad this defense has been on the road. You can see the efficient field goal percentage for Oregon's defense. It jumps 5% or just under 5% on the road, 48.8% at home, 53.3% on the road. So another thing to worry about there, which is why, in my opinion, Stanford has to be the move here. Uh, I haven't bet this game yet, and I want to get some other opinions before I actually pull the trigger on it, but I'm definitely leaning Stanford here on the money line next game. Washington State at Arizona, big one here. Uh, this is Washington State, who's in second place in the Pac-12 against Arizona, who's in first place. So this is a battle for the Pac-12 here. Arizona laying 11 and a half points in this game, total sitting at 150 and a half. Betting trends on the Wazoo side. 
Washington State 4-4 against the spread on the road this year. 9-6 against the spread in Pac-12 play. 9-10 against the spread coming off a win. On the other side, Arizona 10-3 against the spread at home this year. 15-8 against the spread as favorites. 8-6 against the spread in Pac-12 play. Let's take a look at recent schedules for these two teams, and both have been very impressive. Wazoo's 9-1 in their last 10. 4-1 and one in their last five on the road. Arizona 8-2 and two in their last 10. A perfect 5-0 and oh at home on their last five. Strength of schedule, pretty much even. 101st to 112th. We'll start with the matchup for Wazoo's offense. And Cougars have the edge in all three major categories here as far as surface level numbers go. Fish and field goal percentage, offensive rebounding rate, and turnover rate all edge to Washington State. If you're wondering where on the shot charts Washington State's going to score from, let's look at the mid-range here. Short mid-range, Washington State, 137th in frequency, 44th from the long mid-range, and they're very efficient shooting the ball from there, 34th and 49th. Arizona defensively in those two zones in the last 10, 171st and 194th. Here's where it gets concerning for Washington State, and this applies to both sides here, home away splits. You see Washington State offensively, their efficient field goal percentage, 40th at home, 180th on the road. Defensive efficiency down a little bit as well. Uh, and then we flip it over to the Arizona side. Look how much better Arizona is at home. Efficient field goal percentage, 94th on the road, 16th at home. Defensive efficient field goal percentage, 254th to 47th. And total rebounding rate, Arizona first in the country at home. Now, on the other side of the court, we got the Arizona offense. And we got to give the Wildcats the edge on this side. They're really good on the offensive glass, 17th in the last 10 games. They also don't turn the ball over, 29th in turnover rate. Huge edge in both of those uh, categories over Washington State's defense. Efficient field goal percentage, which is the most important one, Washington State actually has the edge, 49th to 110th. But check this out. Here are the numbers that officially put me onto Washington State. Spoiler alert, I'm taking the 11 and a half. Uh, look at the battle of the basket here on this side of the court. Arizona, 14th in shot frequency at the rim. 40.9% of Arizona shot attempts in the last 10 games have come at the basket. That's a shitload. Look at the Washington State defensive numbers down there, though. 38th in defensive efficiency at the basket. Opponents are hitting just 55.4% of their shot attempts at the rim against Washington State in the last 10. Cougars have played great defense down there, which is why I am taking the points. I mean, those home away splits scare me. Arizona's been a monster at home. Washington State's been much better at home themselves. So the fact that this game is in Arizona is definitely scary scary but 11 and a half no way it's a battle for the pac-12 and i think we're gonna see a great game washington state plus 11 and a half like i said earlier live show 3 p.m eastern time we'll go through a bunch of games as many as we can uh nba live show at 4 p.m eastern time if you want my top bets for all sports parlays of the day or you'd like to join the discord head over to kylekerms.com the information's right there on the home page thursday night we're having a good week let's keep it going remember to bet responsibly and i'll talk to you in the discord